All right, let's finish talking about, uh, maybe I should put part two up here, right? <laughs> We're gonna talk some more about these uh, introductory pages in Pace 1125. Let's focus now on polyatomic ions. So an ion means it takes a charge, so there could be positive or negative ions. If you look at the table, 5-3, you'll notice there's actually only one that's positive, and that's ammonium, NH, is it NH4? NH4 is the only positive one listed, and a lot of the others are negative. Some are negative one charge, several negative two, there's a couple that are negative three charges. It's good to be familiar with those. If you were to copy that onto a 4x6 card or 3x5 card, and think about it while you're doing it, write the name, the charge, and what those atoms are that make that up. It will help you, but um, that's a lot to memorize, okay? It's a lot to memorize, and there's a lot just to learn in this pace. So again, supervisor, teacher, parent, I would suggest that your student be allowed to refer to this chart without memorizing the whole thing. But let's talk about what these ions are. Here's the way I explain it to my kids. <laughs> This is um, nit nitrate, NO3, am I saying that right? Nitrate, yeah, NO3 is nitrate. And then the NO2 is nitrite. But let's take this nitrate, so it's nitrogen plus oxygen. There are three oxygens with this one nitrogen, and they form a gang, I call it a gang. It's like they're inseparable. They're best friends forever, we will always be together. We may join up once in a while with a different positive ion. We might be with lithium one time. We might be with magnesium another time. We might go out with calcium, but we will always hang together as a gang. So they are very strongly bonded to each other. All right, we'll talk about covalent bonds later and why that is, but these atoms are strongly attached to each other, so they don't separate. When they bond with other things, they stay together as a group. And if we separate it from another ion, a positive ion, positive ion pulls away, but this stays separate and it will not separate the nitrogen from the oxygen, all right? They're best buds forever, they're a gang. Now, I've never actually, you can believe this, I've been teaching chemistry for decades. <laughs> and I was a chemistry student. I don't remember ever seeing the term oxyanions before. I'm like, what? Why have I never heard this? All right, it's another term. Again, there's so much vocabulary in chemistry. And if we break it down, it's not hard to understand. Oxy means it's coming from oxygen. And ion means that it is a negative ion. So that's all it means. So we have these types of polyatomic ions. If they have oxygen as part of their molecule, then they are called oxy and ions. It's just a term. Nothing to understand, nothing too hard, nothing you have to do with that. It's just know what the label is, okay? <clears throat> Let's talk about how we use this now. If I wanted to put lithium with uh, nitrate, NO3, this one's positive one, this one's uh, negative one, I can just put it together. Li NO3. Done, okay? We would call that lithium nitrate. So we take the name that's right on the chart, take, the take this name of the element, you just put those two names together and you have named that compound. All right, notice that this sulfate is negative two charge and lithium is a positive one. If I wanted to put them together, I would need two of the lithium. Li2, two, two of the positive ones to balance the negative two charge on the SO4 but that would be lithium sulfate, all right? So the positives have to balance the negatives. Let me bring in uh, magnesium, and I'm gonna put that one with the nitrate, all right? All right, I have a problem. Magnesium is positive two. Nitrate, this gang, is negative one by itself. Uh-oh, so I actually need two of these gangs. I don't go through and change the subscript here to two and change that to six, I don't do that, all right? What we do is we put parentheses around this and put a subscript of two down here. And that means I need two of these gangs, these polyatomic ions, 
to match up with one magnesium atom. Does that make sense? See? So now I have positive two here, negative one distributive property. Think back to algebra. You're distributing two times the negative one to have negative two charge, right? Now if I put magnesium with the sulfate, SO4, MgSO4, boom. Positive two, negative two, I only need one of each, just push them together. We're done. So what's cool is you can take any element from that first table with all those positive ions, okay? What table is that? Five, uh, five, one, all those common monatomic cations, they call them. You can take any of those positive ones, match them up with any of these polyatomic anions, smash them together, and just play with the subscripts to get them to balance, okay? Um, I think it was on page five, at the top of the page, <laughs> Put a smiley face at the very top of page five. A second, perhaps easier way to determine the empirical formula is to use the crossover method. Yes, let's talk about the crossover method, okay? Um, I'm gonna erase that. And they have aluminum which has a positive three charge. Oxygen, oh, I guess I wrote that up here. That's what I was starting to do. I said, I knew I wrote that down somewhere. Oxygen is a negative two charge, all right? So positive three, negative two. If that's the charge, the crossover method says I take those charges and I go like this, boom, and those become the subscripts, okay? So the two, not negative, just the two, comes over here and gives me a subscript of two, the three, comes over here and gives me the subscript. Now think about it, two times positive three is a positive six charge, and then three at the negative two gives me negative six. They go through a whole page talking about absolute value and trying to come up with um, least common multiple, and that sounds too much like math, doesn't it, okay? Yuck, let's get away from the math. I love math, but you, you're probably freaked out thinking, least common multiple, I hate it, least common multiple, I understand. So let's do the crossover method. That's an easier method and they're presenting it, okay? So that we can always use that. So even like here, when I was trying to do um, magnesium with NO3, all right? So magnesium was positive two and nitrate was negative one. So I have two and one, and then I just switch it like that. So the magnesium becomes a subscript of one, which you don't need to write and then we put a two outside the parentheses around the NO3. All right, not too bad. Let me take a quick peek before we move on, see if there's anything else here on page six. I did want to mention here on page six, uh, they have copper, Roman numeral two, so again, that reminds you of the charge, but when we put the molecule together, that's not part of the symbol, that's just part of the name, so we don't put it in the symbol. So you'll notice here it's just CU, for copper and then the SO4 comes right after it. We don't need any other subscripts. We have one SO4 gang and one atom of copper and they don't put the Roman numeral in the middle of the chemical formula. They call it the empirical formula, same thing, chemical formula. Uh, then they show an example down here with zinc and nitrate and again doing the Switching the exponents, man, that helps. And I think that takes us to the end of that. And then we're going to start talking about um, naming other types of compounds in the next video.